The world-famous Aachen Horse Show, the CHIO, or Official International Horse Show of Germany, has been a major fixture on the international equestrian calendar for well over a century. Aachen epitomizes the very best in show jumping, dressage, and carriage driving. In 2007, the show expanded to include vaulting and eventing. This program will provide a behind-the-scenes look at activities, personalities, and legacies surrounding the 2005 Aachen competition. Situated at the meeting point of Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands, Aachen is a city that is rich in history, yet fully in touch with its place in the modern world. Aachen was the imperial city of the Emperor Charlemagne. Its historic city hall was the coronation site for 32 German kings. Pastries from the Aachen area, including the Aachener Printem, a type of sweetbread, are well known throughout the world. Known as well for its thermal hot springs, Aachen has attracted visitors seeking various forms of therapy for well over a thousand years. Today's Aachen is a model of successful structural change, having departed from mining and conventional industry to become a leading center for high technology. The University of Technology at Aachen is the largest technical school in Germany and one of the most renowned technology incubators in Europe. With its research and development partners, the university has spawned the growth of more than 500 new companies since 1985, providing over 10,000 jobs. For over 40 years, Dr. Arno Gago has played a pivotal role at the Aachen Horse Show and in the world of international show jumping. Formerly the chief course designer at Aachen and a renowned author on the subject, Dr. Gago remains actively involved as a member of the show's organizing board. We spoke with Dr. Gago on the hallowed ground of Aachen's main stadium. Aachen um, is a traditional show, existing since many years, but everybody who is born gets old. No? And what we are trying not to become old, to maintain the tradition, but to move from year to year. And when you see the stadium, the last 20 years, you can even observe um, improvements, small changes from year to year. Sometimes I say, joking, tell me, show me the Sunday image and I tell you the year. So we try to improve from year to year. No? The Grand Prix of Aachen is one of the most prestigious Grand Prix in the world. and. Um, I consider it to have Olympic level and some riders say for me it's the same, the Olympic medal or the Grand Prix of Aachen. And I think this shows the importance of the overall uh, event. 
First, you see the organization has been grown and has two parts. One is the non-profit organization, which is organizing the sport. And I would like to mention that besides this big event, we have about 30 more uh, equestrian, mostly equestrian events in all the facility except this place. To finance this, we have a marketing company, um, I think a very sophisticated, smart, uh, smart directed marketing company to bring uh, economical partners to work with us and to help us to make this big event and the payment of all costs over the year possible. The structure is that uh, on one side you have the club who is responsible for all the sport and on the other side you have the marketing company who is responsible for, for the marketing concept, for the television, uh, for the attractive, for the spectators here on site. And I think that's a very good concept because on one side uh, the persons are looking for the sport and not uh, at the same time have to think about what to do with the media and what to do with the sponsors. So we see us with the marketing company as a um, supporter for the, for the sponsors. The first year I came to Auckland was 1958 and uh, with uh, the U.S. team with Bertillon de Nemethy, our ship to keep in coach, and he brought us here uh, early May. This was our base. This was our base. We stabled here six weeks prior to this horse show. This was our schooling facility and these back fields. We uh, started out, we watched Wiesbaden that year, that was in May. We then went to a show in early June in Norton Hardenburg, which is again a very big show, and uh, then of course came back and showed at Aachen. That was rather unnerving because I watched them build the course one day at a time. They'd build these uh, mammoth fences. They were very, very big fences in those days, massive fences, and every day they'd add a couple, and uh, it looked more and more insurmountable, but we did well. We did well anyway. So I've been here a long time. The, from uh, 47 years later, the, the structure, the, the format of the place is basically the same. I compete, my, that's my first trip to Europe in 1956. Uh, that is just 48 years ago. <laughs> and uh, uh, we won the Nations Cup here in this time. Yes. And, uh, and since that I have been uh, almost every year. Well, it was a really surprise for the rest of the world that we come from, uh, we come from Brazil. I was with the two uh, fellows from the army, General Menezes and uh, Coronel Ferreira. And, uh, and then uh, we surprised the world uh, when we win the Nations Cup with the 22 teams. Because in this time, well, now you have selections, you have... Uh, um, modern conditions, but uh, 40, 50 years ago was a little bit wide. Like the great show it is, it always has been the premier best in the world. They keep adding, they put back and put back and put back into this wonderful facility. The Aachen community is so behind the horse show. Uh, this year, of course, was a dramatic change since last year even. This fabulous new building, it looks like the Paris airport, perhaps, but uh, it houses offices, it houses restaurants in a way, it houses seating, it's, uh, th that of course is a great change. They've made this, this last uh, schooling warm-up ring here twice the size. This used to be for years a little collecting paddock with two fences. It still has two fences, but it's double the size. (laughs) 
young writers uh, in America, what they have to concentrate on is not just lessons and horse shows, the mechanics of riding, the horse show questions, they have to start uh, more basically than that. They've got to handle their horses. That's a very weak point in America now. You just can't be a finished competitor without being a horse person, yes. a horse woman or a horse man. That's very, very cosmetic and very shallow today in America. They don't handle their horses. They don't know what goes into horse management. Then concentrate on the riding. They don't have the depth and range. We, we grew up uh, just after the war. We had to handle our horses. We had to make our own horses. We, we uh, had that base of horsemanship that you see much more in Ireland, you see much more in England, much more in Europe. Then the polish came. We have now the frosting on the cake. We don't have much of a cake anymore. We have the frosting. And that's not, that's not uh, very valuable. We have um, now a, a, a bigger number of uh, riders, uh, top riders. But um, in, uh, in, in the old days, we still, uh, uh, the riders from the old days, uh, I said uh, Hans Gunther Winka, Bill Stenkrau, Raimundo Dinzeu, they could be brilliant today. Only the numbers of Gee, riders I'm was not very, very, very big. But uh, the concurrence today is, uh, is uh, much bigger. Uh, and uh, of course, the quality of, uh, of the sport uh, going up. We got really nice. Really nice. <laughs> really nice. The big difference, there are always many, many entries at Aachen. In, in fact, years ago, perhaps more, because they would take 15 teams. These speed classes of 50 or 60 in those days would have 120 riders. So the numbers uh, always were very large. What's very different in the old days, you would say, 10% were maybe superstars or very good riders. Another 10% were adequate riders. 80% were often kamikaze pilots. They're, they're rough and ready. The, the, the least of the best today at Aachen is excellent. Next competitor, Ellen A top amateur today Danach at Aachen is excellent. And, Andrea and you work above that to this top, uh, this elite of elite. You take uh, Ludger Bierbaum, Rodrigo Pessoa, uh, the German squad, uh, Josh Lansing, the British squad, the BZ Madden. You take, the, uh, it's just, uh, there are 20, 30, 40 people. Each could win any class. That's the difference. That's the big difference. I won the Grand Prix of Aachen twice, Rodrigo won once, and the Grand Prix on Wednesday, in between Rodrigo and me, we won eight times. Oh my. So, <laughs> uh, Aachen for us uh, is uh, something really special.
The anchor rider on the victorious United States show jumping squad was BZ Madden of Casanova, New York. Following the team competition at Aachen, Madden shared her thoughts on the day. One month later, the U.S. team would go on to capture the 2005 Super League Championship. We all kept saying, I can't believe we won, but uh, it was, it's always a long day for the Nations Cup and uh, we had a very good first round and then they actually made the course quite a bit bigger for the second round, so it, it didn't seem like it was going as well, but uh, it was the same for everybody. Everybody was having a little more trouble in the second round, so uh, by the end we ended up actually winning decisively, so that was great. <laughs> You know, last year we were knocking at the door. We were second here to the Germans. We were second in Athens to the Germans, and we were second in Spruce Meadows to the Germans. So, to come here and be have it be the biggest team event of the year and to come out on top was uh, it was a real victory for us. My name is Katherine Walsh. I work for Laura Kraut. I take care of uh, Miss Independent and Anthem and Allegiance here at Aachen. I'm Clark Shipley. I work for uh, BZ Madden. I'm a groom for her. I have uh, Authentic here and uh, Judgment for the USA team. Even before I came here, the reputation of Aachen is just uh, everybody that I've talked to says this is the best horse show they've ever been to. And uh, so I was really excited to come and, and everybody here loves it. It's just, it's really nice for everybody. And uh, it's, it's very exciting to be here for sure, for everybody. Uh, Aachen, Spruce Meadows are probably the top, you know, that I've been to that uh, I think it's very much one of the best in the world. These horses are, have been traveling for a long time. It's not like this is something new for them. So they're, um, you know, they're used to it like us. We get used to it too. So it's, it's a little bit difficult and tiring for them, but they're, they're good at it now. <laughs> it's really a spectacular place. It, um, Really, the, the stabling is amazing. It, the horses feel so comfortable here. It's the best uh, environment for the horses that I've been to. Um, and the environment here is just really special. The crowd, the, um, the ring itself is amazing. It's, um, you know, it really gives you just such an amazing feeling walking up to the ring. Um, and uh, the excitement, the everything here is just, very special, so I love it. It's really a great place. You know, it's easy to compare it simply to the Olympic Games, to the World Championships. Uh, the best horses in the world are here. Uh, the atmosphere doesn't get any better. Um, this is the place to show. Words can't express uh, the feeling. It's like I'm in a dream state. Just woke up to watch um, a horse that we're involved in uh, be part of a silver medal won by the Dutch team. I also think it was a great experience having a one-two punch, United States winning and the Dutch coming in second. I mean, what can an American expect beyond that? I mean, to sponsor a horse and to participate in an event of this magnitude is wonderful. You know, the, the venue is a very special, special place, and I don't think it gets much better outside of the World Equestrian Games or the Olympics. I think that, in, in my personal opinion, it's something that most Americans should try to visit and experience themselves. <laughs> The venue of this magnitude is, um, there aren't too many in the world, and to experience this um, is almost to me uh, a form of meditation. It brings me into another world, 
the horse world is a beautiful world, beautiful animals, beautiful owners, and um, it was a great experience. Based upon firmly established principles governing the selection and licensing of breeding stock, the German horse breeding industry is world renowned. A recognized leader in this industry is Harley Seifert, whose horses have competed successfully at Aachen and other major shows throughout the world. An architect by training, Mrs. Seifert has built a solid international reputation as the breeder of numerous top quality jumpers and dressage horses. During our time in Germany, our production team was deeply honored to accept an invitation to visit Mrs. Seifert at her beautiful farm in the north of the country. My main passion are my horses, that's for sure, and then my husband. <laughs> I am an architect, namely an interior designer, and I became a horse breeder because of my passion for horses. It's not what I learned and would never have dreamed about becoming a horse breeder. If someone would have told me when I was young that you will be breeding horses, I would have replied, well, I don't think so. Everything but breeding. I didn't want it. I couldn't imagine it. Pferdezucht aufgebaut mit Unterstützung meines Mannes. Er hat mich auch finanziell immer sehr unterstützt. Und wenn es hieß, ja, ein Pferd sollte verkauft werden, zum Beispiel damals Granuschka, die Mutter von. I built up my horse breeding farm with the support of my husband. He supported me financially. And when I was thinking to sell a horse, for example, Granuschka, Conterno and Kalur's mother, Sometimes you think you should make some money in order to give something back. But my husband said, no, don't sell a horse. It is not going to be sold. And so I've been fortunate, and that is important to mention as well. You need a partner that supports you and the breeding. Well, I've been breeding for decades now, and I decide only by myself when I pick mares and stallions. I do it all by myself. So I remain a passionate breeder and will do so in the future. Another American who has become a fixture at Aachen is musician Bob Chisholm. Currently based in Munich, Chisholm represents a proud tradition of jazz, gospel, and blues artists who have found success, appreciation, respect, and recognition in Europe. You've been stepping out, honey. Somebody else is stepping in. I've been here since, uh, for 15 years. And uh, it is great. So everyone who had the chance to come to Europe must come here, especially in the summertime. I do a lot of things with the horse, uh, horse shows, and uh, I work also in um, Baden-Baden for the horse races. And in Vichy, France, they have uh, wonderful horse races there. And um, along with my... Uh, jazz and uh, blues concerts, uh, I, get, I prefer to be with the uh, horse shows. I think it's special because it's been here a long time. They have a great tradition even before the Second World War, Aachen was here. And there was maybe one or two years that they didn't have anything, but it has uh, uh, riders and uh, jumpers and dressage from all over the world. And uh, it's a beautiful setting. Uh, rain or shine, it's just wonderful, and sometimes we have up to uh, 50,000 people in the stands uh, three or four times uh, during the week. I perform in the uh, Champion Circle, which is a VIP lounge. I play piano, I, I do uh, some Ray Charles, some uh, Fast Domino, Stevie Wonder, uh, 
a little bit of everything for everybody. You may be happy, but you will only see the same. I've been in the music business for over 30 years and um, I was playing in a, in a hotel in Santa Rosa, California called the uh, Flamingo and I met uh, a family there and they were traveling to Europe and they needed someone to show them around so they hired me as a driver and uh, sort of a bodyguard. So we traveled all over Europe uh, for about four months and then I left the family because I had an offer to work in a piano bar in, um, in Spain, in Marbella, Spain. And I was down there for three years and later came to Germany and from Germany a friend from London, his name was Wolfgang Goetz. Uh, he brought me up to Aachen and uh, I've become a part of the tradition. And I'm here every year, <laughs> six days a week, and I love it because the horses are beautiful, the ladies are beautiful, the land is beautiful, and the food is outstanding. It's been tradition in, in France, especially in, uh, around Paris, and uh, for, for many, many years, and also in um, Scandinavia, that the uh, jazz and blues audience uh, have been really uh, well received and um, I mean they're they're really music fan they know music history they know more about the black music culture than I do I've learned a lot of things here and uh, it goes back to uh, Josephine Baker and um, uh, just about every famous uh, musician has been here I know that I made you cry and I'm so sorry, dear. But what can I say, dear, after I say I'm sorry? One of the most famous, uh, well-known musician here is, uh, is uh, Mahalia Jackson because uh, uh, Germany really uh, loves her music and uh, she's well missed. Monday morning No matter how many times I travel back to America, uh, it keeps bringing me back here to Germany and also to Aachen, the horse capital of Europe. <laughs>
win here for me is like the icing on the cake. Um, I had a great win in Las Vegas that was really special for me with all my friends and family there um, being celebrated from both sides, from the German side and the American side. Um, but Shutterfly had a bit of an easier season since then, so this is a real comeback and um, it just showed he was confirming how good he is, one of the best horses in the world, and it was an honor to win today. Providing a dramatic highlight to the week's festivities, the 2005 Aachen Horse Show was honored with performances by the Spanish Riding School of Vienna. Making their first appearance in Aachen since the 1950s, the renowned Lipizzan Stallions and their classically trained riders wild audiences in the Deutsche Bank Dressage Stadium. If you do dressage, that means you gymnastic the horse to make the horse flexible, to make it easy to ride, to make it easy to handle, and to have a healthy horse. We do start the horses in an age of four years. We do not start when they are three. We start when they are four years old and we start very slowly. So the first two years is just basic work. We ride the horses straight ahead, keep them straight, ride them forward, make them flexible to ride, ride them on a bit. And when they're about six years old, uh, we start to collect these horses and then the real training starts. People know if they see a dressage competition, if they watch video or television and they can see Olympic Games. So they can see the pirouettes and the flying changes and everything. Uh, of course we show the same, but we show it in a pas de deux, we show it in a quadrille, but we also show this um, classical movements, uh, for example on the long rein, which means the rider walks behind the horse and the horse does everything. It, he does even the one-time changes and the piaf. So we like to show to the people if you train a horse correctly, if it's sensitive enough, you even can do it if you don't have your weight edge or the leg for showing the horse what to do. And also the Spanish riding school is very famous for the schools above the ground, which is Levard, Capriol and the Coubet. And we show that uh, from, from the ground, or I mean by hand, when the rider is walking next to the horse, and we show it also from the saddle and that makes it very special and uh, people enjoy of course when we do the jumps but we cannot jump all evening you know we jump we make few jumps uh, so the people can see everything and uh, this is maybe that what people enjoy so very much The youngest horse will be eight years old and the oldest horse will be 26. No, we have two of 26 <laughs> and one of 25. So the average age will be about 15, 17 years.
you ride your horse in the correct dressage, if you keep it happy, if you keep it healthy, you will, you will enjoy riding. Among the many social events taking place during the Aachen competitions was a dinner honoring the United States dressage team hosted by the publishers of HorsesDaily.com. The event was held in a historic castle turned hotel in the nearby Dutch town of Herlen. When we saw this on her internet, on the website, I mean, we were so excited. And my husband and I, we travel all over the world. And we have been everywhere and seen so much, but we have never had so much fun as we're having here with this whole group. Just teasing. Arkin's the biggest horse show in the world and it has a very prestigious reputation and so to ride or drive in Arkin is very special. I've been involved with horses since the day I was born because my parents were pretty keen and I started carriage driving when I was eight years old and the reason for that was because I had a pony that was so naughty I couldn't sell it and it was a Shetland pony and he, we couldn't sell him, we tried and he came back very quickly so I started to drive him so that I could do things with him because I was too big to ride him and that's how it began and then that grew one pony, two ponies, four ponies and I drove ponies until 1990 and then I progressed into the Trocana horses. In front we are saying that Windsor is a really big competition but Aachen is the biggest we know and it's uh, also a place where horses, sponsors, riders, drivers meet all together and uh, find a way to do better and better on events and also in, on, on the, the compete, real compete. It would actually take you more than two years to prepare a team because you would have to start with uh, young horses of say four or five years and you would train them individually for the carriage and then put them together in two lots of pairs and then when they're comfortable in the pairs and you put them together in as a four you can do that bit in a year but from there on that's when it's really hard work is to get the four horses to really bond together and that takes a lot of work but at the same time you must still work them individually you can't just put them in a team and continue to train them as a team member because they forget how to do things that they should do individually. For instance, the horses on the left don't bend correctly to the right and they become stiffer on one side. So you have to co constantly train them individually as well to keep them level, straight and keep their muscle structure even. So it's not just a case of putting four horses together. There's a lot more to it. It's, uh, I think for me it's something like you, you're meeting four horses, you're trying to know which kind of horse it is. They have all different characters, all different way of moving, all different way of uh, uh, being in competition. And you have to listen every four ones and to take the better of everyone and to take the better for the team and so it's not to break all the horses in the same size it's only to use all the horses qualities and to develop all the movements correctly to go all together but it's not breaking in a more it's not breaking all the same it's using for all the different horses and we can see all the differences and when somebody else look the team for Marzar he he, he, he seems to see exactly the same horses and we can see four horses 
completely different and we're using all the difference to go faster, nicer and easier for everyone. It's based on three-day eventing, um, the ridden three-day eventing with the dressage and the, and the marathon and, and the obstacle driving. And it, it, when I started, it was very much more simple, but it's become quite high-tech and, and very advanced now. But um, when you go down to grassroots, it, you, you don't have to do it at our level. You can do it at single and at club level. But eventually, when you get to our level, you need really good moving horses, you, you need a lot of equipment, the harness, the carriages, and, and you need good horses and a lot of good people around you. That's also something that's special about this sport is that you need so many people to help you because you've got four, five, you actually bring five horses, you're allowed to bring a spare one and interchange them into the team at any time in the different phases. So, you, you know, it's a lot of work and you need a lot of equipment and a lot of help to make this happen. But uh, yeah, we, we do the dressage on the first day and the cross country on the second day, which is split into three different sections. We do a, a roads and tracks phase and then a walk phase. And then we do the phase E, which has the eight obstacles. And the idea is to negotiate the obstacles as quickly as possible in alphabetical order of the gates of the obstacles. So you walk, in, you, you walk the course, you walk to obstacle one, you've got gates A to F and you have to pass through the gates in the right order. If you pass in the wrong order, you can be either eliminated or get a lot of points for doing it wrong. And when you do that, you're out, you're last place. So you, you have to really learn the course and we have to walk these obstacles at least three times. And then the last day is the equivalent of the show jumping phase where we, we do a cones course. And the, the cones course that we did today here in Arkham was the hardest course I've ever driven in my entire life, but it drove really well. It was a very good experience. Although everybody wants to win Arkham and they're very competitive, the atmosphere is still superb. I think it was a fantastic show this week. Uh, we had a tremendous uh, number of spectators, more than 300. 35,000 spectators were here in Aachen for this year. Uh, we had some bad weather in the first few days, but in the uh, next few days, like from Friday to Sunday, it's fantastic. The sun is out, the crowd is here, and I think everybody is seeing a fantastic sport in all different uh, disciplines, in show jumping, dressage, and in uh, driving. The main thing is that uh, we always try to have the best uh, facility for the riders and for the horses because a great crowd is coming for the sport and to see fantastic sport. And besides that, we're really trying to have the uh, best infrastructure for the people who are here. And we have the best riders and drivers here in Aachen. And that makes it always special. And I think every rider wants to win once Aachen. And uh, you know, that's like be once Olympic champion. And maybe this is a little bit uh, the special what is Aachen. Thank you.